Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm Mark Levinson. I write as Mark L. Levinson because the world is full of Mark Levinsons. I don't know how Ruben Goldfarb manages or Michael Kagan. Uh, I'm not even unique as Mark L. Levinson, but I am the Mark L. Levinson who wrote occasionally in the Jerusalem Post, op-eds, book reviews. I'm not the Mark Levinson who was a jazz musician and I was married to Kim Cattrall, although I enjoy being mistaken. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read four poems, and if uh, if I haven't uh, run out of time, I'll read a, a uh, clinker, fifth poem by somebody else. This is called Away on Business. The hotel TV makes the newsreader look transplanted, as if cast as himself in a respectful or irreverent screenplay based on news from not long ago, or as if lending credibility to the destruction wreaked by Godzilla. Soon, the hotels will start abandoning the great big screens. The guests will watch their phones. Now the headlines. May they be trivial. Don't burn this room into my memory. Not that I mind the mock Navajo quilt, snow-scalloped window, Neutrogena soap, or locked connecting door to the next room. Next poem. This is uh, it's a brand new one called the black and white biopic. The great man's childhood takes 20 minutes. Until his aging mother calls his name, he looks up from his work, and now his life will be the grown-up life he's famous for because he's played by a grown-up film star. In real life, too, your kid looks up one day from his homework and now his face has changed to Uncle Gideon's, although there's no predictability that now sets in. But no one hires an elderly actor for the last minutes of the biopic. Under false wrinkles, the star is trusted not to remind the teary audience by his demeanor that he's young inside. Hmm. Third poem is called The Comet. Comet. They bribed me to get up for the comet. Then we'll have breakfast at Howard Johnson's, Mom said. And I felt that the world of the breakfast menu would be new and adult. The comet looked not just foreign, but wrong, pointed obliquely against the sunrise rather than joining it or circling it. If you noticed a stray sock on the floor where it couldn't possibly have landed, that was the comet. Comets move sideways, Dad explained, if you call that explaining. <clears throat> we returned to the car. Not yet rush hour, but Howard Johnson's was bright and active. Breakfast tasted too good to be kosher. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people say that iambic pentameter is the most natural rhythm for English, but I like anapistic tetrameter, which is the Dr. Seuss rhythm. Uh, this is a poem called Visit. The neighbor showed up at my door with a smile and said, Sorry, tonight you'll hear noise for a while. We expect to be partying loudly by ten, and the volume won't drop before midnight, if then. I replied, and the thought 
that the noise could be curbed and your party proceed with no neighbors disturbed but with bright conversation and music that's low never entered your mind? And the neighbor said, no. And I'm shocked and surprised and object to your stance when I've come to apologize well in advance. That's the nature of parties. There's nothing to do. And it's no fault of mine that I'm downstairs from you. <laughs> if you must hold a raucous, disruptive event, I explained, there are suitable halls you can rent. Do you think I came up here to ask your advice? He exploded. I came being thoughtful and nice. Um, of the four poems, that's the most autobiographical. <laughs> I said I would read a clinker, and I think I have time for it. I want to read a poem by Carl Sandburg, just because it's so good. This is called Potomac Town in February. The bridge says, come across, try me, see how good I am. The big rock in the river says, look at me, learn how to stand up. The white water says, I go on, around, under, over, I go on. A kneeling scraggly pine says, I am here yet, they nearly got me last year. A sliver of moon slides by on a high wind, calling, I know why. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll tell you everything tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>